This is just one of the 20 homes damaged by the coastal fire. I'm in Coronado Point with the latest on the damage. With gas prices through the roof, brazen thieves hit a car in Mission Bay. Never had coronavirus before? Well, you're in the minority. What medical experts are saying, how we can learn from that. Plus, San Diego's first milk bank and how it's helping out during the baby formula shortage. And finally, a children's band that plays what the parents want to hear, the kid tributes. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts now. Crews in Orange County are still battling the coastal fire and working to save more homes from burning. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Carlo Chiquetta. I'm Marcella Lee. They are up against dry conditions and wind tonight as they try to get those flames under control in Laguna Niguel. It is burning just north of Dana Point. The exact area is San Tropez and Laguna Ridge Trail. That's southeast of Laguna Beach. Now, according to the latest update from firefighters, about 200 acres have burned. The coastal fire, as it's being called, is 15% contained. 20 homes have burned. 11 have been damaged. About 550 firefighters, including San Diego firefighters, are battling the flames. CBS 8's Kirsten Holmes is live in Orange County tonight with a look at the damage. Kirsten. Hey there, I am here in Coronado Point. It's a gated community in Laguna Niguel. I want you to take a look behind me. We have to say on this side of the caution tape, because if you take a look at this house, you can see the nails in the boards in just one of the 20 homes that was damaged by the coastal fire. And I want to direct your attention to this right here, this heap of charred remains. This is what's left of a Porsche. The president of the Homeowners Association we talked to today say the deal with this fire was all about the luck or misfortune from the wind. This is my house. <laughs> I'm so, so sorry. So, well, it was my house. Ramin Yazdi is the president of the Homeowners Association for Coronado Point. When I was here yesterday, I was watching the fire. I was trying to get as close as I could. And these homes on this side caught the fire because they were the closest to the, to the ridge and the, and the wind was coming up. And it's just luck of the wind. So what happens is that, that heat that these uh, homes generate because they have a lot of fuel in them with furniture and everything else, and with the 35 mile an hour wind, it pushes the ambers towards the direction of, of the wind. We were able not to get in to salvage anything from our house. Uh, my husband just brought me this photo of our wedding for four years ago, and uh, it just made my heart just, um, just, I'm in such tears right now that we're able to salvage this photo. Lynn Morey says she and her husband lost everything they had in the coastal fire Wednesday night. The guard gate called and said, hey, there's, you need to evacuate. So I got here as soon as I could, but it was too late because the house down the street was on fire and I could not get in. William Lackey with the Orange County Fire Department says they were just doing their job when they were able to save the photo. We were looking for him and uh, just happened to walk by and see you guys talking to him and recognize him from his picture. So it worked out nice. Looked like he was pretty speechless. It was, it was a nice, it was a nice thing in an in otherwise pretty devastating day. As other neighbors sit back helplessly, picking up the pieces of what used to be their homes. We have um, a neighbor that um, got injured evacuating, and you know, hopefully she's okay. I think they took they took her to the hospital. I'm so grateful for everybody that's here today um, and are able to save what they could. Things can be replaced, yeah. and people can, and so, you know. Because of the fast action of everyone, you know, thank God everyone evacuated on time. You're taking a look at more damage from the coastal fire. Another one of the 20 homes that were completely destroyed by this fire. And you see there are so many fire crews, utility crews, all out here on the scene working together. I want to direct your attention to one of our local crews from Chula Vista Fire Department. They say they're out here monitoring hot spots and damage. And we just heard from firefighters about an hour ago. A couple of the walls in these buildings actually fell, so that's why we're staying on this side of the caution tape. We can't get any closer because it's still a pretty active situation right now. And we are just here working with everyone, trying to pick up the pieces again. You can smell the smoke. It is still in the air. I just take off of my mask or I take my mask off so that I can do these live shots. But 
you know, when I'm not on TV, I want to do what I can to stay away from the smoke. You can see particles of ash in the air as well. It's still a really active situation up here. Reporting live in Coronado Point for CBS 8, I'm Kirsten Holmes. Back Kirsten, so grateful that no lives were lost and there were minimal injuries. But as we look, there's so much destruction. Do we have any estimates at this point on the damage in terms of dollars? Not quite, but I talked to again the president of the homeowners association out here who says homes in this area started about five million dollars and that's the starting point. So when you put that times 20 homes, uh, you know, the price starts to go up from there. Carlo? A big bill to be paid there. Kirsten Holmes reporting live, and that doesn't even count the Porsches and other valuable possessions. Again, crews from San Diego, Chula Vista, and Poway are helping fight that fire. While resources are being sent to help, CAL FIRE SAYS ITS CREWS ARE STAFFED AND READY TO RESPOND TO ANYTHING HERE IN OUR OWN COUNTY. SAN DIEGANS ARE BEING URGED TO STAY VIGILANT AND HAVE AN EMERGENCY PLAN READY. TODAY, ALL 11 LOCAL LAW ENFORCEMENT AGENCIES JOIN TOGETHER IN A PARTNERSHIP TO PRIORITIZE MENTAL HEALTH CRISIS CALLS IN SAN DIEGO COUNTY. STARTING MONDAY, THE AGENCIES WILL START REFERRING CERTAIN CALLS TO THE COUNTY-SPONSORED MOBILE CRISIS RESPONSE TEAM. The trained team will then respond in place of police officers. That individual suffering from mental health illness or injury needs a trained clinician. They need someone who has the time and the training and the expertise to deal with them. It's a burden that should not be placed on law enforcement. Before calling 911, the county does encourage people to please try and call the crisis line at the number you see on your screen. If you're dealing with somebody in a mental health crisis, you can then reach a mobile crisis response team. Today, San Diego's mayor put his historic ready to rebuild infrastructure budget proposal on display. It covers more than $800 million in city projects for the next year. That includes street resurfacing, stormwater investments, and city facility improvements. The biggest project is Pure Water San Diego, where they'll be recycling water for drinking water. That's what Mayor Todd Gloria says is the largest and most ambitious infrastructure project in the city's history. By 2035, Pure Water San Diego will supply nearly half of our city's drinking water and reduce the amount of treated sewage that we discharge into the ocean by about 50 percent. The city council is currently reviewing the mayor's proposed budget in a series of public hearings. With gas prices at some of the highest levels in the nation, thieves have been getting creative, siphoning gas right out of parked cars. A woman in Mission Bay is facing a steep mechanic bill after what thieves did to her car. CBS 8's Tim Blodgett has her story. Over the last week, San Diego County has seen another increase in the price of gas. A five-cent jump at the pump puts the average price of a gallon of unleaded at $5.85, a dollar 44 more than the national average. No, it's definitely not cheap right now. Gas is expensive. Food is expensive. Waking up in the morning in San Diego is expensive these days. When Cindy Stratton walked out to her Ford Ranger Monday morning, she found that she was running on empty. Stratton parks her car here in a public lot across the street from Belmont Park in Mission Bay. When she took it to a gas station to fill it up. And all of a sudden, gas was just pouring all over the ground, all over the gas station. I grabbed the, the pump out of the car and really just sat there watching gas just pour from the bottom of, of my car. I just didn't really know what to do. There was really nothing to do. When she called a mechanic, she realized that someone had gone under her car, drilled a hole in the bottom of her gas tank, and siphoned fuel with a hose, leaving her on empty and a steep mechanic bill that could run her over $1,000 to fix a tank. She filed a police report, but has not heard back from SDPD. There's just a lot of crimes of, of opportunity, if you will, some petty crimes. People are desperate. For hardware, there are no options to preemptively prevent someone from drilling into your tank and taking the gas, but there are locks you can get for your gas cap. Experts at AAA say you should always park your car in a well-lit indoor garage or somewhere with high foot traffic, like along a city street. While Stratton is frustrated with the steep bill and the hassle she has to go through, she still loves living in Mission Beach, though she wants her neighbors to stay vigilant. It's not something that, that feels very good, and unfortunately, I think we're seeing a lot of it, you know, in our beach communities up and down the county. Tim Blodgett, CBS 8. One million empty chairs around the family dinner table. Tonight, the U.S. is confronting a number that once seemed inconceivable. 
The White House marking 1 million COVID related deaths since the pandemic began. This as the country sees new daily cases going up. Federal data shows that on average right now about 300 Americans die from COVID every day. 300. Most of those are individuals 65 or older. President Biden is urging Congress to approve funding for more COVID-19 resources like testing, vaccines and treatments. You're in the minority tonight if you haven't caught COVID. The CDC says the majority of Americans have contracted the disease since 2020 and the number keeps going up. So why are some of us able to avoid it? CBS 8's Heather Hope talked with a local doctor about what they're learning from people who haven't come down with COVID-19. Today I talk with people who had coronavirus before and their whole family got it. And I also talk with some who work downtown at the county administration building with the public and have never tested positive for COVID. So I talk with a medical expert about what's their secret and what can we learn from people who have never had coronavirus. Knock on wood so far, nothing. So Mariana Elledge has never had coronavirus. I work with the public, a lot of people coming in. We don't know if they're vaxxed or not. Um, I'm vaccinated, boosted. Mariana credits good genes and hygiene that have kept her from getting yeah. sick. I wear my mask when I'm on public transportation or in crowded areas. Um, lots of hand washing, lots of sanitizing, and we keep our distance. Researchers with the CDC would say Mariana is in the minority as the majority of Americans have had coronavirus since it began to spread in the U.S. in 2020. We still tried to be really cautious. We were in masks, but we still ultimately got it, me and my wife. Johnny Brown got COVID in January. Now the new father of a three-week-old baby girl says he does not take any chances and avoids large crowds. If someone hasn't gotten it yet, that's great, um, but I, I, it's pretty difficult at this point. Point. Scientists around the world are studying those who have never had COVID to see what in their body is giving them immunity and if it could be a rare genetic variant. I am sure that there are people out there who are built who will not get coronavirus and why that is, I don't know, but that's the reason that we do science and if it is something that we could make a drug that mimics that, that would be great or if we made a vaccine that could mimic it then it, we would all benefit. UC San Diego's chief of infectious diseases, Dr. Davey Smith, says scientists are looking for answers in those never infected with COVID as they've done with HIV, Alzheimer's, and Parkinson's. For HIV, we actually learned that there were a group of people who were naturally resistant to HIV. And once we figured out why that was, people actually made a, uh, drug companies made a drug targeting that particular molecule. UCSD is conducting cohort studies where doctors follow a group of people over time to see who gets sick and who doesn't based on COVID exposure and vaccination status. It is a good idea to go look for why people naturally are resistant to certain things. I, I hope there's more people like me that are not gonna get it and I hope that just continues. <laughs> Heather Hope, CBS 8.